Hello everyone. Today I'm going to bring you an in-depth review of the Hobby King HK10 Power Analyzer. I have tons to cover, so let's get started. General talking points. This is a $19 power meter. Keep that in mind throughout the entire review as I uh, pick at a few small little nagging points. Starting off with specifications. Voltage range of 7.2 to 60 volts DC current of 0 to 100 amps. It's good for lithium batteries of 2 to 6 cells and it features a passive balancer. It displays voltage, current, calculated wattage, and ampacity. Now just powering this up here, you're greeted with the Hobby King uh, I guess startup screen. You have your simple menu options, few buttons, Going into the wattage, it displays your voltage, current, wattage, and the calculated capacity in amp hours. It's pretty nice. It's accurate. I've tested it with a Tektronix benchtop multimeter, as well as a uh, custom current meter that I've built myself. Um, compared to other power meters like the Watts Up bog standard power meter for uh, RC hobbyists and uh, other DC power users. Uh, it holds its own ground. If you want higher current range, like up to 130 amps or somewhere in that neighborhood, you might want to invest in something a little bit more expensive. Uh, this is only $20, but it goes up to 100 amps, which is good for most small RC applications. Um, otherwise, simple three button interface. The other three menu items on here are lithium polymer, lithium iron, and lithium ion. I have a lithium, lith lithium ion battery. Sorry, I'm tongue tied. Let's get that box out of the way. Oh, also, very simple box, very clean packaging. Good on them for saving a little bit of money and resources on the packaging. Now, I just plugged in the balance lead on the uh, power analyzer. I'm going to go into the lithium iron feature. You have the uh, device display the type of pack that you have. I have a three series two parallel pack. You have the onboard voltage and a fuel gauge. This is just storage charge so it's only at 62%. You also have the individual cell voltage readout up to six cells since it's good for two to six S. Now you also have this other feature of balance. It will passively balance by just connecting uh, each set of cells and draining them appropriately to balance them. I really don't need to balance these right now, so I can just disconnect this. Um, the other thing to note, even though this is getting into the internals, it's a bit of a nitpick. When you have any sort of alarm condition, such as a missing balance lead, low cell voltages, high cell voltages, um, you have this very annoying continual beeping sound that will not silence itself ever. Like that. It gets pretty annoying very fast. Um, the designers simply could have coded something which has a few beeps and then it silenced itself for a minute and then it beeps a few times again just to remind you that there's a problem but not enough to say the world is ending check your batteries right now um, small nitpick regardless moving on um, very simple user interface very clean buttons uh, one other thing on the externals before I go into the internal review um, the connectors here are Anderson power poles these are my own I put these on as soon as I got it out of the box the power analyzer comes with these XT60 connectors by Hectronix. Sorry, Hextronix. Um, they are quite nice connectors. I like them better than Dean's now after seeing them and playing around with them for a little bit. Um, they're essentially 3.5 millimeter bullet connectors inside a nice grippy plastic housing. Um, Hextronix designed these and then released them with uh, basically no license fees because they wanted their connectors to become more popular. They are a better alternative to Dean's by all means. Um, you have greater grip surface, you have 
compatibility with other types of connectors like the 3.5 millimeter bullet connectors. Um, even the connectors feature a little recess for the heat shrink to slip into before you actually apply um, heat to shrink these down so you don't have exposed bits of metal like with the jeans connectors. Um, this is actually real nylon plastic, it's not the cheap polyethylene or other crap that you find with knockoff Dean's connectors. Uh, because the manufacturers can save a little bit of money on the patent royalties, they can bring you a better connector for cheaper. So just keep that in mind that it comes with these XT60 connectors, which as the name implies, 60 good to 60 amps. It comes with these, not the power poles. Um, anyways, that took way too long. Moving on to the internal review, if I can just quickly unscrew these. Uh, just in case you notice any issues with the case uh, line up, lining up, um, especially on this side, I've already undone, undone almost all of the screws except for one on each side, just so I can do this review very quickly. Um, so just bear in mind that the presentation isn't what it is when it's out of the box. Uh, other small nitpick. The top case screws are machine screws, whereas the bottom case screws are self-tapping metal screws. So I think it's a bit of a cheap out on the designer's side, since all the case holes are exactly the same, but small nitpick, not going to end the world or detract from the overall product. Um, going inside quickly. First off, this is a microcontroller driven device. It's run by an Atmega 16U with, I believe, let me check the G-Key, um, 16K of program memory. So there's plenty of space for any code that runs here and loads more. Which is interesting to note because the in circuit system programming port is exposed. It's unpopulated, but it's here. Six pins. So it's free for anyone to really muck around with. Um, potentially the manufacturer hasn't uh, turned on the code protection bits and potentially people can muck around with it and uh, maybe even dump the firmware and modify it or just install their own. It's up to you. It's uh, free for the hacking, I suppose. Um, the screen itself is an HD44780 driven LCD display. For those of you not in the know, this is a very common LCD display within the amateur electronics scene. Um, if you've ever seen an LCD display on an Arduino, 90% chance is this. Um, this. This screen is really cheap. It's only maybe 2 to $7 depending on what kind of deal the manufacturer got. Nitpick time. No backlight, no contrast control. No backlight means its visibility in low light conditions is shit. And no contrast control means its visibility in high light conditions, like on a sunny day, is shit. So you probably need to play around with it to read the screen well. Um, regardless, moving on, the LCD is spaced off the board with proper standoffs, screws, which is good because you can't press the screen down onto the electronics below, causing a short circuit. Considering that if you have this hooked up to a 30C battery, sparks could fly, the magic blue smoke could get released, and things could get pretty hairy, especially if it's a lithium polymer battery. Um, so it's good that the manufacturers decided to spend the extra 10 cents on two pieces of metal. Um, would have been nice if they put in uh, two pieces of header here so you can actually remove the screen uh, to inspect the components below, but Minor nitpick, I understand that they want to minimize the thickness to save space and weight, so I can understand that design decision. Uh, moving on, the balancing port has a nicely laid out network of resistors for the uh, voltage reading and the current, uh, sorry, the cell balancing. Um, simple, not much to speak about there. The current sense network is more interesting, and I do have a nitpick about that. The current sense resistor is a slab of copper metal. Initially, I thought it was just a piece of copper someone grabbed from a junk bin and soldered in, but actually, it is a precision trimmed current resistor, uh, sorry, current sense resistor. It has a machined notch in it so it can fit over onboard traces on the circuit board and not heat them up and cause damage to the board when under load. Um, 
and it should have fairly consistent resistance so that all their models should have similar calibration. The problem I have with their current sense resistor design, and this is going into electronics design theory, is that if you can see it in here, which you probably can't, it's right there between the two negative leads. Your power source is on this side, your current load is on this side. The problem is that current sense works by running a current through a very low resistance object. You measure the very small voltage produced across that device, and that's proportional to current based on the resistance. Problem with that is these two leads will have a slightly different potential difference, which isn't a problem if you just want to put your battery on this side and just want to put your load like a brushless motor driver on this side. It won't matter. If you want to use this for prototyping electronics and you need a common ground between your power source and your device, and this is only part of your instrumentation suite, this is a problem. If you have a common ground between these two points, you will have no voltage reading, you won't get a uh, current display. That's a nitpick. I feel that the designers copped out here because um, to do high side voltage sensing on the positive leads, you need maybe an 80 cent to uh, $1.50 part small current sense amplifier from Maxim, uh, Maxim Electronics. Um, Really, it's just a, a cheap cop-out by the designers. I can't think of any other reason. Uh, otherwise, the current sense and voltage sense uses an LM358 uh, and an LM324 chip under the hood here that you really can't see. Uh, they're cheap op-amps, but they work. Um, I can't really inspect the voltage sense uh, circuitry, the resistive divider. I can't tell as to its precision, but voltage is accurate overall through the uh, leads here. Um, other than that, quickly wrapping up, there is an unpopulated position here on the board, three positions, ground, unknown, and unconnected. Um, I suspect that this is an obsoleted feature, maybe it's uh, an analog temperature sensor, or um, a servo pulse width modulation out port, or maybe an I squared C to another sensor, um, or serial. I really can't tell because I all it does is just connect to the microcontroller. Uh, there's no other clues to really indicate what it's designed for. So if anyone figures it out, let me know by all means. Uh, quickly wrapping up, if you are in the RC Electronics world and you want a power analyzer and you're on a budget, by all means, buy this. It's It works. It's fine. If you are in the high-performance RC market, and you are trying to drive uh, 100 amps continuous load into your uh, into your current sink. I would invest in something a little bit beefier than this, just because the board thickness or the uh, copper thickness on the board doesn't seem to be very good. It's good enough for maybe 80 to 100 amps for short loads, but overall it gets a little bit dicey. I wouldn't want anything melting, shorting out, and sparking. Um, in terms of the user interface, it's all good, except for that really annoying beeping sound um, that makes me want to desolder that buzzer. Um, buzzer right there. Otherwise, I really can't think of any other nitpicks. Couple cheap outs on design, but hey, it's $19. I can't argue with that. For the price and the product that you're getting, it's it's insanely hard to argue against it. You can argue against uh, questionable quality on some components for other products, but everything seems to be done right with this except for some user interface issues. Um, and the one nitpick about the current sense network, which will not affect 90% of the uh, target market. Anyways, I'm out of time, so there's the review for the Hobby King HK10 Power Analyzer. Um, disclaimer, this was not sponsored, I did this on a whim, and uh, yeah, that's it. If you like this video, please leave comments, like the video, subscribe.